So last week you would have seen us knocking down the old cistern here and digging around the mountain, getting ready to build a new room. This week, not only do we have to finish that digging process and see what the mountain holds for us in terms of our foundation, but I also have a very large list of items to do as we have a crew coming in just five days time to help build that room, open up doors and windows and other items as well. So in order to prepare for them, I have to finish hand hewing all of the logs that we're gathering from up in the mountain in order to use those as the window lintels and door openings. We of course need to finish digging, open up a hole between the two rooms to pass pipes and electricity, as well as a massive amount of other items to prepare for them to arrive. And unfortunately this week I am working alone as Heather and the kids have left the USA for a couple of weeks. And I'll explain why a little bit later on, but for now I need to get to work. Well, today we're back at it, digging out this area for the new room. We're so close, we should be finishing just in the next couple of hours here. And then we can inspect that foundation to see what the requirements are gonna be. So the section that he's working on currently is a bit precarious as it's all a bit tying into the house and as a reminder these are dry stacked stones and in this area there would have never been any mortar or any rendering over top of them um, so we do have to be a bit careful as he's chipping away those areas but we are almost there he's done an incredible job all of this was buried underground most of it was Renata, this uh, slate here. We just have one final bit to pull away from the house. More or less, this is giving me, giving you a sense of what this entire digging process would have been if we had chosen to continue forward digging out behind the mountain. So you can get a sense that with how long this area here is taking, with it being the simplest part of what would have been a massive digging process, digging behind the house, um, you can see that this would have taken at least a full month of digging to finish behind the house, which is what he had originally estimated. Now, of course, we're gonna be using all of these stones to build the new room, build um, a bit of a wall against the mountain to hold the mountain back, as well as to improve the aesthetics of the outside area. Um, but once all of that work is done, we will have an immense task of uh, cleaning up this terrace, leveling it back out, removing any of the unused stones to other areas for future building projects. And then just in general, a lot of cleanup and landscaping work. Is 
Isn't it just so convenient that all of the stones just naturally break off in a flat kind of format there, usually with at least two, three, four different flat sides. Look at this one, it's almost perfectly square. That's just naturally how the rocks break off and it makes building a house like this so much simpler. As you can see, all of these stones came from the mountains surrounding this area. And of course there is some work to do to shape them up to make them fully usable, but they break off naturally simply 90% there, sometimes 100% ready to simply place them into a wall and build a house. I myself am super excited to see and learn and to show you guys how local builders take these stones, shape them, and then build a room out of what we just jackhammered out of the mountain. It's not only gonna be a beautiful process to witness, but I'm gonna learn a lot in the process. This bit is um, definitely the most nerve wracking part because the stone that he's jackhammering on right now actually comes in all the way to the house. So this is the stone right here that he's jackhammering on. It comes all the way into the house and this uh, area, this wall is starting to crumble a bit. You can see as he's jackhammering, the, uh, the dirt and the mortar is coming loose between the stones, making all of this quite loose. You can see all of the dirt falling down. It's a lot of vibration. That's just slowly, slowly. My favorite Italian phrase, piano, piano. So I keep having to go back and forth, watching them outside and then coming and inspecting inside. Wow. You can see the mortar and the dirt crumbling. my job to watch and call them off if I think it's too dangerous. Um, we're right on the edge here. So I've said it before and I'll say it many more times. It is so impressive to watch Andrea work. I'm very thankful to have someone like him handle this job for me. He's doing things with an excavator that I had no idea were even possible. He's basically delivering us a square box to work in down to the millimeter walking around checking his depth with a laser level that I'm quite jealous of. And he's like spot on, bang on to the centimeter. So off camera, we just had the engineer take a look at the site and we just got finished talking with him. Um, we didn't get um, uh, bad news at all. We also didn't get great news. I would say it's right in line with expectations, which is good. It keeps the budget <laughs> exactly where it should be. He's not making us do um, the crawl space like we had to do in the house. A little confused about that, but that's fine. I don't want to do it. So we're moving forward and Andre is now digging 45 to 50 centimeters beneath the finished level of the floor so that we have space to run the pipes and the cement and all of that good stuff. And then in just one week's time, we will begin mixing up that cement and building the walls. All of these stones, there are a shocking amount of stones piled everywhere. We've got a pile that he just placed close to the house here. 
and we're gonna pull from that and start building this new room. Well, the excavation is finished. And while yes, that was a very stressful process to go through, it's very encouraging to see the space finished and ready to go. Andrea did such an impressive job of essentially carving us a square cube into a mountain, getting ready for this room to be built. As nervous as I was to start this process, once he began, I realized I had nothing to worry about considering the person that I hired for the job. So very thankful for his expertise here. But at the same time, it also showed that we made the right decision to not dig further into the mountain. And let me show you why. So in case you weren't aware, our original plan was to continue digging back into the mountain and the entire length of the house in order to um, once and for all stop any water intrusion from coming in on the bottom floor. But one concern is how did they build the house against the mountain? So we can't inspect that. The walls on the inside are relatively straight, but on the outside, are they straight or are they leaning? Which doesn't make any sense when you first think of that, but the way they would have dug into the mountains and built the house oftentimes would have meant that the exterior part of the wall was quite at the angle, which means if you excavate the, the mountain away from the house, the house risks collapsing and you have to slowly reinforce it. And that is what we found after digging out a small area. So if you look here, the house is straight but then when it meets the mountain, it immediately curves in quite a lot and then actually juts around this stone here. Now angles and everything are hard to tell on camera. So it's, it doesn't look as bad on the camera, but it is leaning quite a bit this way. So if you remove the mountain here, you would have had to very slowly reinforce the house and prop it up so that it would not, um, you know, fall down. Um, that's not really a process that I would have been too excited to go through. So I am glad that we were um, more or less forced into the position of deciding not to go that route uh, because that would have been opening up a huge can of worms. So now that the um, space has been dug out, I need to um, finish off this hole that connects the two rooms. This is how we'll pass all pipes and electricity from room to room. What we're building out here is essentially gonna be a uh, utility room, laundry room, storage, multi-purpose. Um, who knows what else we'll um, put into it. It'd be nice to add like a, a mini bathroom or something, but we don't really know. At this point, we'll see how much space is left over. Like it's gonna be fairly easy so far to get through this. For those asking about Heather and the, the kids, why they weren't um, here last week and if they're doing okay after the car accident. Yes, everyone's great, everyone's fine. Um, they ended up having to go back to the USA last minute. Um, Heather received um, some family health news recently with her dad and um, wanted to fly back to be with him for that as they go through the diagnosis and the treatment plan and all of that. So uh, the kids went with her. Um, of course, I would have preferred to be able to go back with them, um, but with the amount that is going on here and was scheduled and um, could not be stopped, um, we decided it was best for them to go and I would continue working here. Um, and they will be back in one week's time. Well, we can check that job off. We now have a sizable hole connecting the office to what is currently the outside world.
When Heather and I were first whitewashing the uh, the floorboards for the uh, the first half of the house, I think we were overthinking things quite a bit, kind of really focusing on the ratios of water to paint, making sure that every board was uniform from board to board, and uh, really taking our time with it. But then as we got further along, I realized that it's actually the inconsistencies and sloppiness, if you will, that makes the whitewashing technique work. I don't know much about the originations of whitewashing. I'm sure somebody can fill me in in the comments below, but it certainly was not meant to be uniform from board to board. It's the variety and the difference from board to board when you put them all together. And some boards you see the grain texture a little bit more. Some boards are um, less transparent, but then when you put them all together, it just really works. And for me, what that means is I can just continue to be a little bit sloppy about it, which means today I should be able to have the rest of the floorboards for the house completely painted and maybe even sealed.
All right, there are no more beams to work on. Everything is finished, hand hued and stained. I guess I do have to polyurethane them. So a little bit of a premature celebration, but that stain needs to dry for about 24 hours before I can coat it in poly. But the boards that are painted are ready to go. So it's time to polyurethane the floorboards. <laughs> Well, I put the camera down uh, for the last day because I'm under a severe time crunch. I have to get this floor finished. We have a construction crew arriving in just a couple of days and I figure it's not very nice to make them walk across the beams as I have been, but let me catch you up to speed. Once this stain dried for 24 hours, I seal coated it. I finished up painting all of the boards. There's two layers of boards there. Some more here in an entire room full of boards over there. Those have all been painted and seal coated, ready to go. I've actually started on the flooring just back here just a little bit. Took a long time to get uh, things laser aligned and proper, but then I kind of realized that there's nothing aligned in this house. So I don't need to worry about it that much. Usually a, a brand new house built from end to end might be off by let's say a quarter of an inch. Well, how far off this house is in terms of its squareness is not measured in inches, it's measured in feet. And that's not an exaggeration. So <laughs> there's nothing square about it and I'm just going to embrace it. And it's, it's looking quite nice from underneath, which I will show you soon. The last time I laid these floorboards um, in the bedroom kitchen area over here, there was a lot of confusion of what in the world I was doing. Um, and rightfully so, because I was using the wrong terminology. I keep calling these floorboards, but in reality, it's laying the ceiling for the bottom floor and then essentially a subfloor for the top floor, uh, which is why I don't mind cutting them up so small. I tried and tried and tried to, in this room behind the camera, put the boards together properly in the four meter length that they come and it just was not possible because they've been warped and twisted so much. I was spending hours on just a handful of boards and when I chop them up small they go in easy. The reason that's fine is because they are supported on either end and the middle by a beam and in the end it's just a subfloor that will hold the concrete that we have to pour um, on the entire second store. We have to pour a couple inches of concrete for structural purposes. Um, so yeah, the seams will never be seen and it is structurally sound enough to hold concrete. Well, my to-do list is not finished yet, but they are arriving with uh, building supplies, bringing up a load of sand as we'll be pouring the cement foundation tomorrow.
around me Where well, there's nothing but the breeze and the gray of 